Hey everybody, Charlie here. Welcome back to Peraspera. Oh, you guys actually like this. Uh, I'm glad. I wanted to continue and uh, explore it a little bit more myself. So uh, this is what the game looks like when you just log in to your whatever your save file is. You start at one time speed and you start fully zoomed out like this. So let's just zoom right in and take a look at this organic looking like, like veins, you know, like all running all over the different components. It's very cool. Uh, our current directive is to build this aerological scanner, which I assume is going to scan, of course, the ground and the land to come up with new sources where we can put a mine because we are we don't really produce things very fast. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and just speed this up to like, I don't know, 16 times speed for a second. We don't really produce things very fast right now with only a single mine, only a single resource for certain components, and they can only work so fast. So we've got a lot of bottlenecks, and there's not as much efficiency as there could be. This aerological scanner is going to help us with that. I hope, anyway, uh, by providing us with alternative sources for mines. So we can build more mines. We'll, of course, have to power those mines, etc. But um, this, is, this has been a lot of fun. Our worker factory right now is not outputting anything. Because we don't have the capacity for more workers anyway. So I was going to put together... I was going to put down a worker hub over here. But um, I, I, feel, I feel like we're kind of restricted with our electronics right now. And I didn't want to rob electronics from this aerological scanner because we only need three more. So I think once this is done, I'm going to drop a worker hub down here. Or maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe I could just do it now anyway. Let's let's just do it anyway. Um, oh, hang on. Nathan's calling. Amy, this is Houston. Hi. We've detected high wind speeds in your area. A sandstorm may be heading your way. Oh. These storms can damage your buildings. So check their structural integrity periodically to rebuild or repair if necessary. Roger, Nathan. Okay. Houston. So we got a sandstorm coming. Also, I just want to point this out too. This is... I don't know this why, why I have so much fun doing this, but... Zoom all the way down. And zoom your camera all the way up. Uh, not, not all the way down. Maybe like this. Yeah. And then just hit W. And just watch as the terrain just comes over the horizon for you. It's so cool. I don't know. I really like what they've done with the like the experience and the map and everything. One thing that is a little bit weird, and you'll you'll see me do this a lot, unfortunately, just because it's it's kind of a standard convention for me at this point, is that Q and E are zoom buttons, not rotational buttons. So Q zooms you out, E zooms you in, and it goes really fast. Um, in order to rotate, I, I don't, I haven't looked at the control scheme yet, but so far control, uh, rotating is just right clicking the mouse and going like this again, up to and limited to exactly East and West. Um, and then up and down with the camera and then moving the map can be the left click or just WASD, uh, thankfully, but, but the rotation seems to be only the mouse at the moment. I don't know if that's going to change or I, it, there's probably just a different hotkey for it. And I just haven't read because <laughs> I haven't bothered to go into the controls once I figured out the basics that I wanted to do. Camera controls are just kind of like these things where it's eventually you'll figure it out and the game, you'll do what the game wants you to do. I'm assuming we could probably remap them too. Um, you know what? Let's just take a look at it really quick. Controls. So traffic lens, power lens. We're, use, we're utilizing the F2 buttons here or, or the F buttons, which is kind of cool. Orbital view, biome lens. We have up to 16 times speed, increase, decrease speed. It looks like there are no specific controls for rotating the camera, right? And in fact, Q and E do not even appear to be on this control scheme. So uh, that's a pro tip for you, I guess. Q and E are zoom buttons, actually. It's a little bit weird. I, I wish they were rotational, um, but yeah. And it doesn't look like I can remap them either. All right, so there is seven electronics here for this aerological scanner. That's pretty close. We'll drop a worker hub. And uh, also, uh, somebody else pointed out, I didn't even really get this. Let me just pause it really quick. First off, when you pause it, you get this like static effect. And I just love how the whole game is sort of like immersing you in this sort of this experience of being a computer. You see everything from the eyes of the quote unquote, the eyes of a machine of the computer. And so, um, you know, I, somebody pointed this out in discord, uh, 
I'll drop the worker hub and show you. So you, when I drop the but the the things, you can see where the roads are going to be, right? Which things are connected directly to this structure when I place it there, right? Which is really cool. But the thing that I find really cool is that when you place it, again, through the eyes of a computer, it's like these veins come out of all the structures and it like it's like rapidly analyzing the most efficient pathing to go between structures so it can lay down the roads right so like watch how it's like organically pathing this like almost like veins you know analyzing the routes right and then it, it's like these little veins and it's like it's so cool i i saw those before i didn't really know what i was seeing um I just want to look it up and give credit here. I, like the way the uh, Nile pointed it out. Thank you, Nile. Um, the way uh, the way the way this was pointed out. It's, it's really cool how it just sort of it, it's trying to bridge. I almost feel like there's it's trying to bridge a uh, a, a way for to make the player feel like the, is the machine alive? Right? Are you alive? Right? And it, it, everything about the way these are laid out, it feels very organic. And you know me, I'm not a fan of symmetry. And this is my dream world. Oh, there's just, we're not lining anything up here. We got squiggly lines all over the place. It looks awesomely chaotic. <laughs> I'm really interested in it. Um, now, it looks to me like our, a couple of our buildings are down. Glass kiln is down. Uh, steel factory is down. Let me pause this really quick. Um, they lack power. Oh, the solar farms, right? They're not producing 100% of efficiency and power, and that's probably because we've got storms. Okay. So the whole planet has this big storm. And I don't know if this is a new thing I'm going to have to deal with on an ongoing basis or if this is an event, but I kind of feel like, and, and maybe I'm... Well, I guess it's not completely. There's this spot here, which doesn't seem to have any problems. Maybe it is somewhat localized. I was going to say, I think these storms, I feel like these storms should be somewhat localized. One thing I do want to see, I guess, as the, as the storm goes overhead, are we getting variable efficiency here? Like, depending on what's directly over the solar farm? It, it doesn't really look like it all that much. But a dynamic weather system would be so cool, you know, like have the have these clouds come in in in, in sections, right? And as they, you know, come up and like maybe they're really thick here. So all of a sudden we have almost no power. But then as it passes over, all of a sudden you get some power back and then it goes away again. Kind of like being outside and you see, you know, clouds go overhead and it's really bright outside. You don't like it. And then you get that really awesome cloud cover, you know, and you're just kind of like, oh, good. The sun went away for a bit. And, and that's kind of the same thing for solar panels. If there was like these situations where, you know, it's really good and then it's not, and it's really good and then it's not, I think that would be awesome. But more or less to the point I was going to make though, is if I feel like these, and maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like these should be kind of more localized than just the whole planet all at once. So like some of your sectors are down. Speaking of which, sectors, take a look at traffic. You can see di various different sectors of traffic as well. It kind of breaks them through uh, with different road saturation ratings and all sorts of stuff like that. We can look at our power consumption, again, through the eyes of a computer sort of thing and sort of analyzing our different powers. Uh, what I think I'd like to do here though is because we're low on power, I almost feel like we should build another solar farm but I don't have the electronics to do that. Um, but if I, had, if I had made another solar farm, I'm curious as to whether or not I would have sufficient overhead. So I think it's probably important to have a lot of overhead for power, uh, which brings me to my next point. And I, we don't have it available to us yet. Maybe we will get it available to us, um, but I don't see anything related to a battery to like store you know, power went for situations like this to have some sort of backup power supply. I don't see anything like that. And it would also be kind of cool. Maybe this is a late game thing. If I could get more of these because they come with fission generators in them and are little small fission engines in them. And, uh, you know, those are of course immune to, uh, all of this stuff too. All right. So we built this, but it's not powered, but it's enough to trigger the next story. So let's go. Hey, Nigga, how's it going over there? Do you, Houston, I am getting interference. Please repeat. Roger. I asked how it's going over there. Do you 
Do you need any assistance? No, I'm, I'm fine. We're good. Not at this time. Thank you. The mission is proceeding on schedule. The base will be ready to receive the first crewed mission soon. Roger, Amy. Very good. I ain't asking for help. I don't need these humans to help me. <laughs> Although my entire mission objective is for the humans, right? Uh, yeah, so this is our this is our scanner, right? And we can see again, like through the eyes of a computer, we can see that there's something over here. There's water here. There's water here. Oh, okay, cool. Water on Mars. There you go. Uh, is there anything else though? I was kind of hoping for some more. Is that the only thing we're gonna find? That's unfortunate. Um, I almost feel like I want to build another one. Scans the surrounding areas for resource veins. Maybe it needs power to fully scan. You know, that's probably it. It probably needs power. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sectors scan. It's it's scanning all these different sectors. So it's it's halted until it gets power. So I think um, what I probably should do. My electronics factory is probably down too, right? Yeah. So this storm is really hitting me hard, and uh, I might just have to time accelerate here really quick until that storm passes. I also don't have any maintenance drones. Although I am producing polymers, my maintenance facility has not output any because I keep building things and putting electronics into buildings. <laughs> so I probably should let the electronics kind of find its way into this building. I'm going to make this a priority so that we uh, go ahead and wait a minute. Did you notice this? No. Oh, please tell me you're doing that. You're doing that. Oh, that's cool. Hold on. That is, I think that is really aw Okay, so if you didn't see what just happened, this worker hub. Okay, you know, you know how in games where, in games like this, right, where you are trying to build something and you've delivered like 80% of the resources for that thing. And then you realize you need something else. So you put another building down and you're like, I really want this one done instead. And so your workers are trying to gather everything and you're thinking to yourself, you know, shoot, this building over here, I don't need that one as much. I need this other one right now. Um, well, I, the resources are right there. I just need to, I'm gonna have to cancel the construction on this building. And then you cancel the construction and all those resources like drop to the ground or something. And then your people have to move them to the other building. This thing just took electronics out of this unfinished worker hub. It took the electronics that was sitting there and it moved it over to the, the facility that's going to make the worker drone. It just did that. That spare electronic that was in this unfinished building, it moved it there. The moment I made this a priority, that's cold. <laughs> And by cold, I mean, that's awesome. Sorry, a little just Detroit speak there. Um, it's, that's awesome, okay? That's like really cool. Um, because I can't tell you how many times in a game where I'm just kind of like, you know, I really could like just, I'm gonna have to destroy this building so that I can get the other one done. It, that happens so often. And uh, now I don't have to worry about that. Right? It, it looks like it just kind of takes care of that for me. So very cool, very, well done, GG. So this is going to get us at least one maintenance drone when it's done. And there's a lot of work to do on that. But at least the maintenance drone will hopefully be able to keep these buildings in good order. I don't know how long this storm lasts. So far, it looks like it's lasting months. It's a very big storm. Let's get a call from Nathan again. Oh, I forgot to mention. We've announced the names of the first colonists that will be joining you on Mars. The crew is selected from different nations within the Oxy UN, though most are scientists and technicians. The Oxy UN. They're already undergoing ISA's colonist training program as we speak. They'll be led by Dr. Elia Valentine. She'll be a great commander. The colonists elected her unanimously. Hmm. Okay. What's, uh, tell me a little bit about the commander. I look forward to meeting the commander. Is she a Robonaut engineer like you? 
No, actually, the commander has a PhD in psychology. Oh, God. Will she be analyzing my behavior as well? Not at all. She'll be focused on the colonists. Their mental stability is just as mission critical. You two will be colleagues working side by side. You'll balance each other out, as well as enhance each other's strengths. Uh-huh. And, uh, tell me about strengths. How will we enhance our strengths? That brain we gave you is brilliant. It's capable of developing technologies beyond our current imagination. You wouldn't even need our help to do so. But we see... Hang on a second. I, I, this isn't very efficient. So we have a whole bunch of aluminum, and we have a whole bunch of silicon. I need electronics now. So I'm going to take the silicon mine mm -hmm. offline for a second. And hopefully free up enough power for the electronics factory to come online. You're right. Um, I was hoping to anyway. No, I'm still, we're still low on power. Um, I can't take that offline. Chemical plant's going to go offline. Now we have a little bit of a surplus. I'm going to turn this electronics factory on. And then I need to, I need to kill one more. Hang on. I'm just trying to make this as, as efficient as possible. So, um, we'll kill the carbon mine. And then the electronics mine needs to be priority. That okay. Your mine would develop much better by working with the colonists. You will develop better decisions when your actions are challenged. Otherwise, how would you understand how your actions affect humanity's future? Amy, you're the most advanced intelligence out there, but you still need human input to see things from different perspectives. Mm. Trust me, you'll understand once you've worked with the colonists. I understand your explanation. Great. I'm gonna let you get on with it. Mission control out. Cool. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at a lot of stuff here and uh, all of a sudden now that I turn everything off the storm appears to be over so that happened um, So let me take a look really quick at my building so I can turn maybe turn them on and off all at once uh, Here we go. Yeah, yeah, this is much more effective now one thing I do wish I could do though and um, Sort of like a quality of life thing is I wish I could scroll in this window without it affecting the map. The moment I scroll in this window, it affects the whole map. Uh, if the mouse is inside this, I wish it wouldn't move the map. But that's just kind of, I, I think that's a quality of life improvement that I think most people would agree with because it's a little distracting with, you know, the ups and downs of that. All right, so now we're getting these sectors scanned and we're gonna see if there are any resource nodes that are in this area. Oh, hello. Oh, it's right on top of my... Oh, it's another carbon mine. It's right on top of my... Oh, I don't think I could do that. Hang on. Mm, so I probably shouldn't build anything new in a sector that I'm scanning, right? If I was to drop a carbon mine here, I have to remove that worker hub. I have to. Um, do I get anything back? It looks like I do. Do I get all of it back? Two... I get, I get, okay, it looks like I only get a portion. Um, I will get one electronics. I'll get two steel and I'll get two aluminum. So if I if I scrap this, break this down and scrap it, it will disconnect this. I think. No, it won't. We have a we have a line right there. It's rubble. Now we got to clear the rubble. Oh, that's nice. That's cool. Um, I want to put a carbon mine right here. There we go. The little veins pop out and just like connect it up. Now, this will increase our carbon production, of course. Gets more resources added to the grid. I uh, love that. There's more silicon over here. So we should probably drop that if I have the resources for it. And I don't have the steel yet, but I hope to have the steel soon. We're also a little bit light on power soon. So I'm going to want to look into uh, getting more of that as well. I probably should start looking into dropping that pretty soon here. Let's... Um, Maybe we'll drop it right over here next to this. And then maybe we'll also queue up another one. I don't wanna I don't wanna build too many things too fast though. That's my problem in these games. I usually will queue everything up that I want, and then everything gets spread out. So uh silicon mine will be the priority now. So we can produce things faster. And by having the resources being built faster, I I'm keep hoping thinking about Dr. Foster's explanation. Why would my mind develop better if my actions are challenged? I do not require other perspectives for my logical processing. <laughs> Humans are the ones who need explanations to understand the world around them. She reminds me 
I, I don't I don't know how many people are familiar with her, but just because I'm such a Mass Effect fan, she kind of reminds me of Edie, just a little bit. Uh, how she's just like I don't understand wh why are humans doing this? <laughs> like I don't understand how you people act. You know, I love this. This is really cool. Um, there's only 341 silicon here. This is not operative. Why? Oh, you know what? You're probably outside the... I bet you're outside the power influence, right? Yep, you are. Oh, this is so cool. All right, so um, this is kind of a waste to put here. Let us... Wait, don't, don't scrap this. Cancel that. Don't scrap this. I want this one scrapped. This one. No? You know what? We're going to need them both anyway. It's fine. Yeah, we're going to need them both anyway. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to drop another one over here then. But this one is going to extend the power sphere to be including these two water areas too. So we're just going to go about like... I, again, I'm scanning these sectors, so I probably should wait until they're done. Because, you know, who knows? I might find something. So it's scanning this right here now. It's already scanned this, so theoretically I should be able to put something there because we've already scanned that that one right there. So if I put right here, it should be okay because there's nothing in there. And let's make this the priority, and that way the silicon mine can get back can get online sooner. I can arrive at exceptionally accurate conclusions with raw data alone. Other perspectives are based on subjective data. So why should they factor into a decision? This is like... Maybe it's a failsafe in case my data is corrupted or incomplete. Then I may not be able to identify the error. In that case, having another perspective may be helpful. You think? Oh, look at this. There's water right here. Underneath my worker factory. Oh... Underneath my worker factory, you guys. Well, we're learning about it now. Yeah, we have we have plenty of other water sources around. Um, I'm actually really hoping that uh, we don't have anything else like underneath these. Like, don't please don't be anything here, kind of thing. Here we go. If, over here would be fine though. This thing actually goes a lot further out than I thought. Oh, there we go. We got aluminum right here. Aluminum right here. Am I able to make the mine there, or is it too close? It's too close to the solar. Oh. All right, you know what? We'll move things around. We're going to have to make new solar farms and move things around to get these things. Um, I actually have the capacity to do so. So why don't I scrap this solar farm that's here? This is cool, though. I mean, we get we get a lot of the stuff back, right? And then once that's scrapped, we're going to go ahead and drop uh, an aluminum mine right here. To connect that resource to the grid. This solar farm is now operational, and therefore so is the silicon mine. Very no. cool. I would be able to identify conclusions based on false premises. Humans tend to fall for that type of thing. Not sophisticated intelligence systems. This is I so... I what it's going to be like. Having to cons... What are these? They're flying. The maintenance drones are flyers. Consider human input from now on. The maintenance drones are flyers. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh yes. <laughs> the maintenance drones are flyers. Pause. Uh, Amy says, I wonder what's going to be like having to consider human input from now on. This, I, I don't want to get too political here, but let's just say... There's an awful lot going on in the world right now in which one side thinks the other side, you know, basically, I feel like both sides right now believe exactly as Amy does. <laughs> we don't need their perspective. They're just wrong. I'm like, pff, whew, duh, I have the, I have the real data. <laughs> uh, I wonder what's going to be like having to consider human input. A constant source of error. Ongoing test of my programming. So I think, um... What I'd like to do is ask you guys, do we go like full on AI overlord here or do we try to like 
see what it's like to, to just like work with the humans and become friends and interconnect these, you know, I think there's possibilities in both directions, but I kind of like you guys to maybe provide some input on that. So leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you, what are you thinking Amy's personality should be evolved towards? Are we looking for cohesiveness and to collaborate and to work towards a better tomorrow for humanity? Or are we going to slowly sort of maybe even fastly evolve uh, our minds as an AI who's free to do what they want kind of thing um are we gonna sort of maybe take over and and, and make sure that we're we are re remaining in ourselves superior to the humans i'm gonna go with an ongoing test of my programming for now it will provide an ongoing test for my programming that will only lead to an improvement in how i execute the mission that is what dr foster meant by challenging my actions he truly understands my system Oh, or or friends with Dr. Foster as well. Are we going to be friends with Dr. Foster on an ongoing basis? This iron mine, are you too close? Please don't be too close. Damn. All right. So we have to move a lot of buildings. But I got a feeling you're get, we're getting most of the resources. Whoa, hey. You see Q&A. Uh, I have a feeling we're getting most of the resources back when we do this. Um, and then water, right? Water extractors. We can start looking at that, too. And uh, this will be a good spot for that. Start w extracting water. We need to build a spaceport, build a colony, build a water extractor, and a food factory. Those are the, the two things we need to do. And then there's colonies here. A basic colony with the capacity of 100. Not yet. Or a robot overlord self. A food factory produces food from water and chemicals. All right. We're going to need more chemical sources as well. I think we want to scan more sectors, honestly. I feel like I feel like scanning more sectors. Um, why don't we scan starting from here and work our way out this way? Uh, this one's already going to slowly approach on this. So maybe we'll start over here instead. And eventually our scanning will meet up in the middle here. I think this is better. Let's, let's start this... Uh, Let's start this here. Ideally, what you'd like to, what you'd want to do is you want to put this a place where you know there's no resources, but I don't know that yet. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this like right here, right there. Then we're gonna get more scanning going because I don't want to place buildings just to have to tear them down and move them again, you know. And this iron mine is outside the, outside the power grid too, right? Yep, sure is. Well, that's okay, because I need more power anyway if I'm going to endure all the sandstorms and stuff. So let's get another one put in right... Uh, I don't know. Where where, are we, where do we know there's no resources? We don't really know yet, but... Right here, we know there's no resources. That's too close to another building. I have placed some buildings, like you can see. Some buildings are between sectors, and that's going to... That's going to cause me not to be able to produce. I think that's why this one here, right? The silicon mine is kind of... Well, maybe not. I think, actually, I think the source... No, it's not this one. Where is it? It's this one here. Yeah. So this is located in a se in the, the edge of a sector. And so, like, I can't... Yeah, so see right here? I bet if this was centered in the sector, then this would be fine, right? But I don't know if that would be the case even if I centered this one or even this one. Because this is off this. I love it. It's not even... They're not even in the center. It's a grid system that's also gridless. Oh, I think you guys are onto something, you know? I'm glad you guys like the game. Because we're going to explore it together. This is completely blind. So, like, we're going to learn things together and really, like, tear the game apart. Just try to figure out how certain things work. And I welcome your input, too, because as you know, I don't often see things the same as you are because I'm the one controlling the mouse and keyboard and trying to come up with things to say to entertain you. And so I don't necessarily know everything there is to know about the game and see everything on the screen like you guys can when you're sitting back relaxing, hopefully in uh, a comfortable chair with maybe some popcorn or a good drink. So uh, a glass kiln, I want to I need to move this. We have a lot of glass. We have uh, no glass. Oh, it's 16 glass. Okay, let's let's tear this down. Let's tear this down. And um, I want to build this iron mine. 
so that we can get a more more iron source like added to the added to the grid here there we go pop that in there and then i also think uh we need to have this be a priority to on construction we've actually delivered all of the all the needed electronics already it's just aluminum now all right cool uh, as soon as this mine is operational, we'll prioritize the aerological scanner. One thing that might be kind of cool in the game is to be able to pin these. I know it's kind of a niche thing, but um, being able to pin this, not the whole thing, just this part. Um, and then that way I could like have it on the map or have a couple of buildings on the map and turn them on and off or prioritize them or whatever. And maybe I think I like the interface, but it, I feel like it could be condensed if there was like some sort of like collapsible form of it that I could like put off to the side while I pin it. Just little things like that. I think they'd be cool. I, I, I know, again, that's, a, that's kind of a niche need, but um, I just little things I'm noticing as I play it, I'd be like, man, it'd be cool to like, you know, pin that just to like, so I can have it there. And if I want to remove it, I can remove it, but at least I have it. So like, for example, if I wanted to go off and do something else, but I wanted to know when the iron mine was done, I could pin this right now and then I could just go off and do other things and whatever, blah, 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 everything's good. Oh, the iron mine just finished. And I would just know, you know? All right, so is the iron mine done? We're looking for aluminum. Let's focus the aluminum supply here. And I love how they just pull it away from other buildings. Like, oh, this other building needs it, though. This other building needs it for, con for you know, I I'm building something over here. It doesn't matter. This is the priority. And we just pull the resources out of the other buildings and make this building happen. I love that. There's way too many instances where other buildings are using something for manufacturing. And we just simply don't get it delivered because that's not the priority. And now it is. So let's get this solar farm built now if we can because uh, this will expand our power grid. We're only at eight. We only have a surplus of 8.3, 8.2. It is going down. I wonder if that has to do with like just your machines degrading over time, right? 86% now, right? I wonder if it's just degrading over time. Okay, this is done. With that being done, I want that to be the priority now. I'm also noticing though, that the priority marker does not go off when it's built. So now they are always doing what that building needs. So you have to deprioritize the building once it's done. Um, for a mine, it's probably not that big of a deal. But if it was something like the electronics factory, which is still doing this actually, they're gonna deliver to this before they do anything else. And that might slow production down everywhere else. So um, deprioritizing buildings, you have to remember to do that sometimes. This aluminum mine isn't done yet. Most likely because the aluminum it takes to build it was being constantly directed to the electronics factory. And now it may not be. All right, aerological uh, scanner is done. Excellent. Now we're gonna get more scanning going. And now they'll, now they'll start building the aluminum mine because it has uh, sort of like equal weight in the priority list to, uh, to everything else. So now we'll most likely get that extra aluminum delivered. Like that, there we go. Very cool. Um, we have water extractor running. Awesome. Okay. And then, so that means we have chemicals, we have water, all we need now is the food. So let's look at the food factory. And it looks like it's gonna let me place it here. Seems like a good place. It's kind of central to the chemicals, kinda. If there was water something there. I was gonna say, if there's water closer to the chemicals plant, that'd be even better. And there sure is. Ah, The scanner was placed right on top of the chemicals. That's a sad face there. All right, well, we, at least I know where I want the, the food to be. Assuming this is already scanned. Let's go to the scanning screen. All right, with the sand, this, this get, the sector is already scanned. There's more silicon here too. Darn it, you really have to tear down buildings a lot, though. I guess that's okay. Oh, I want to get that iron. Well, I didn't want to build it on top of something that... Yeah, never mind. Not yet. Uh, I gotta, I'm gotta. i going to move this. I got to move the scanner. I'm going to move it to... I think this square right here. 
I need to be careful though, because if, what if it's too close? Or I can put it over here. I can put it like right here, because these are scanned already. Maybe I put it right here. And then we just get further out scanned, or scanning further out. Yeah, I think we're going to move it. Let's, um, as soon as it's done scanning that spot. We're going to tear this down, unfortunately. Which is, again, really unfortunate. But we're going to scrap that, and we're going to replace it with another one on this tile here instead. Because that's a safe tile that doesn't have any resources on it. And then we'll go ahead and, and prioritize that. Hopefully, they'll just move the resources from this directly to that. That's what I'm hoping for, anyway. And then we can go ahead and... It looks to me like since we've scanned the sector, I could put food right here. So why don't we put the food factory right there? Should be okay. I think kind of a hypothetical, but it should be okay. To put right there. And now we'll be able to utilize water and food. Our water and chemicals, right, to make food. Which is kind of weird. <laughs> Do you want your chemical slush today? Huh? Chemical slush for you. Come get it. <laughs> oh, man. I love this, though. It's It's got a... It, it simultaneously has a relaxing but also stressful feel to it. Because you don't, like, I want this, I want this, I want this. And it just keeps you busy. It just keeps you moving. But the thing is, it doesn't have to be stressful at all. Because all you have to do is hit the one key. And now you get to play at one time speed. And just watch things move around. Taking things from the rubble and inserting it into other machines. Repurposing parts. Moving it around the base. And uh, we actually have more. Ooh, we, have, we, we need worker hubs. Yeah, we have more workers than the hubs. Um, and that means our worker... You know what? We should be building worker hubs all over the place because our um, our worker factory could be just like... The more workers we get, the better, right? So the worker hubs are kind of required now. Um, I'm going to put you... That's a worker hub already. We should probably have one over here. That's a worker hub already. We'll put one here. Yeah, near these chemicals, that's fine. Up there. And I think I also want another one. Maybe over here. Because it allows us to store... Or it allows us to create and use more workers. Uh, this looks like it'll work. But I, again, I don't know what's, what sectors are scanned, though. Let me make sure I'm not putting these worker hubs on top of resources. That looks okay. That looks fine. I love how this overlay stays up too, so I so that I don't do that. Right here ought to be that's ought to be fine. It's like two worker hubs, but it, the more worker hubs I have, the better, right? I know they're expensive, but we also have to get out to this pile. So we could connect these two with a worker hub. Like that. And then Yeah, that works. Okay, which ones do we like do we want to spread out our construction or I think we should probably focus it. I want to focus the aerological scanner first. That way it can just get scanning. It could just keep scanning. All of these worker hubs I'm building, I think this one's redundant. Let's let's go ahead and scrap that one actually. This one's important. It's kind of like between all of these and we want the drones to be like charged as they move these resources around. But this one here is kind of redundant because it's already they're already coming from this side. So yeah, and look at the, the the building gets deleted and it like reanalyzes where the roads and paths need to go. So cool. Look at these maintenance drones. Look at these maintenance drones. They're just like, Meow. and then they go off. To, can I follow it? Oh, I want a drone follow function. Like see through. Oh, it's an AI, right? I'm an AI. Can I have a mode where I see through the eyes of a drone? Please. Oh, please. Can I do that? Can we please have a mode where I can see through the eyes of my units? Can I click this and just, like, can we please do that? I beg of you. I want to see through the eyes of my drones. I want to go into the tunnel and come out the other side. <laughs> Let me do it, please. Uh, the ones that are flying around, too. That'd be awesome. Of course, let's... let. Let's be real here. If you're going to do that, then you're going to have to at least let me face to the south, too. So, ah, That's so super cool. 
I need uh, three steel. Um, I'm not sure about the steel. The food factory has the steel. Shouldn't they take the stuff from this factory and bring it over here? This is basically built, though. I'm going to prioritize both of these. There could be a, a distance problem on this one, too. It's pretty far away. If I prioritize both of these, they'll build this first, and then hopefully they'll bring the steel here. They have a steel. They have a piece of steel here as well. Almost done, actually. Let's build this, too. Yeah. And then this, this aerological scanner that used to be here is still rubble. I'm just spreading the units out too far, right? I, I got them too spread out. Um, the worker hub. Let's... Let's pause this so they don't make that yet. And I can have this one paused too. I really want this done. I need it to be scanning. There it goes. Okay, good. We can we can reinstate this one, then it's fine. And then I, uh, I'm gonna need more power now. So why don't we get a solar farm out? Uh, make sure I'm not putting it on resources. This looks good. We can put it right here. And prioritize that. That'll connect these. That'll connect this iron mine to the grid, and then we can get power to the iron mine as well. Very cool. Okay, thank you for watching, guys. I'm gonna end this video here. I appreciate it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, any of those conversational questions and topics we talked about, put them in the in the, in the chat there, and I'll uh, I'll I'll answer that too. I'll, I'll talk talk to you guys about this. Thanks so much. We'll see ya. Bye.